Hi, my name is Kevin L. Seri of the University of Wisconsin at Madison of the ImageJ team. And in this part of our uh, series on image analysis, we wanted to take time to profile various open source image analysis tools, one of them being ImageJ. And ImageJ has been a long standing tool that is available freely and open in the BioMJ community. And it's been in development since 1997, uh, all the way back uh, to uh, its original roots at NIH where it was being developed and had very strong thousands of user base where it could easily extend and develop this program. And as the program became more popular and biologists with very little programming background were able to extend this program, my group saw the need to extend it with our collaborators where we developed ImageJ2, which is basically just the next generation ImageJ to allow it to actually have easier ability to collaborate with other tools and interoperate uh, more modern plugins, but also compatible with old plugins and really allowing new features such as better support for big data, better updating, and better scripting. And then Fiji is ImageJ uh, 1 and 2 with batteries included. It's basically a way of getting all the goodness of ImageJ, but for our microscopy audience, and allowing you to actually download this with active maintenance and updates released. And we recommend Fiji as the preferred vision, version of the viewers of this series because it's really for microscopists. So even though it could be a little confusing thinking about MSJ1, MSJ2, and Fiji, just really think MSJ and Fiji, because Fiji contains all the goodness of MSJ that you would want to use for image analysis of bioimaging. So what is MSJ? Because it actually has continued to evolve. It is, as foremost, an application. It's a downloadable application, very easy to use, very simple interface, as you can see here, and it's designed to do image analysis, but it's not designed to compete with very powerful programs like Photoshop. It's really a tool for doing science. Photoshop is wonderful making posters and doing image analysis, particularly for commodity work. But when you're thinking about science and analyzing images, particularly 2D and 3D, ImageJ is for that. It's designed to be very transparent. Uh, it's really designed for open science, so you know what is happening to your data. It is an application that's hopefully easy to use, and it's really designed to be well documented with a simple interface. And it's also meant to be a tool for image science. What we mean by that is really uh, having the tools that you need for microscopy in particular. How you can open up your data, for example, using the powerful tool, the bioformats that uh, our lab and others help develop, where you can open up different formats, or different microscopes. Being able to do uh, very important advanced uh, analysis that we have covered in the overall basics uh, image analysis series, such as registration, segmentation, measurements, 3D volume rendering, and many more. And there are a number of features and hundreds and hundreds of plugins that have been contributed from around the world to help you do your science. But there are a few plugins that I wanted to highlight just to give you a taste of the program. One of them is Trainable Weka, as my colleague Ann Carpenter talked about in her part on machine learning. It's very important to have machine learning based methods. And one of them is the Weka segmentation plugin that allows you to have a very user-friendly tool to integrate machine learning segmentation into your analysis workflow as shown here. And the ability to do Weka in ImageJ has become very popular for doing automated segmentation. Another uh, plugin I want to highlight is the widely used TrackMate. This is a wonderful open source plugin for ImageJ and also part of Fiji that's a great tool for tracking cells and objects. As we covered in uh, the tracking part of our video series on image analysis basics, tracking is a very powerful method to track 2D and 3D objects, as including viruses, particles, cells, as they go over time and space. TrackMate is a very well-documented, well-published uh, program to allow you to do this easily. You can actually run existing algorithms and get data fairly seamlessly out of the program, but in the spirit of ImageJ, you can also extend it. It's actually fairly easy to add your own tools to this, and groups have added their own linking algorithms, for example, to do their own tracking. So I highly encourage you to look at TrackMate. Another uh, tool, it's one of our newest additions, is SciView. One of the classic things that you want to do uh, in programs like ImageJ is be able to visualize your event. As I covered briefly in the visualization part of an earlier talk I gave as part of this series, we really want to understand a 3D object, what happens in 3D, and be able to visualize a 3D process beyond just slices of the stack. We want to see it in its totality. 3D rendering allows us to do this, and one of the newer things we want to do in ImageJ and Fiji is actually have better views. SciView allows you to have high performance uh, with big data where you can actually look at uh, the scenery as a rendering backend and support uh, new features, including virtual reality, where you can roam and visualize your data in 3D. And SciView is also part of Fiji now 
and a very powerful way to render and visualize your data. I do also want to point out that Image 8 goes beyond just being a simple user-based interactive software package. It has built-in usability for users to be able to modify and write scripts and macros, but it's also designed to be for developers, including collaborators such as Ann Carpenter, Soul Profiler, and Jason Swedlow at OME, other speakers in the series, where they've been able to extend their programs by using libraries from ImageJ and vice versa. We want to have ImageJ to be easy to reuse and share beyond uh, uh, one user and one uh, application. And that means we actually have a shared framework. We've actually made it easy for algorithms to be shared, as you can see here, with a number of different toolkits from other developers and labs, being able to extend our functionality. And one of them is Ops. Ops is meant to be a way of sharing image processing operations between different uh, uh, tools so that we can actually enable programmers to develop their own image processing in a different tool and share and reuse in this framework we call SciJava. This can include MSJ, Sort Profiler, NIME, Omero, and others to share and reuse so that together we can actually have a better workflow and also uh, use our energy and activities in the most uh, best, way best way possible. And so we've worked hard in MSJ to interoperate and have integrations with many other tools, including Sort Profiler, NIME, Omero, uh, libraries such as NumPy, ITK. And really the idea is to create a unified uh, uh, resource, we all work together. And this is not only seen by our interactions in the code, but also the forum that we mentioned in another part of the video series where we actually can ask questions online and work together, uh, both users and developers. Who uses ImageJ? It's a pretty diverse uh, base. As you can see here, uh, these are all equally important to us. We always start with the very important uh, uh, novice users and power users, but also scripters and hackers, people that want to modify the code that maybe are in between biology and, uh, and hacking or scripting, or professional developers that will actually want to add new functionality. And that's really the goal we have, is to span the gamut of different applications. It's also important to always understand what are the values that drive the project. What drives the MSJ uh, project is that we want to be functional. We want to be extensible. We want to interoperate with others. We want to be accessible. We want to make sure you can download our program freely and use it without uh, costs, but also know what's happening. You want to know transparency. You want to be able to know that if you download this code and your colleague downloads it, you get the same result, that you're reproducible. Uh, that really is an important part of good science. Be compatible with as many different operating systems and different workflows, whether you're running it on the cloud or you're running it on your computer. And really, we want to think community. So again, that forum that we just started is so important. We really want to make sure we're sharing our problems, our successes together, so that we can progress on our different projects uh, in the most efficient manner. To learn more, I encourage you to go to our website, uh, which is shown here, but I also really encourage you to go to the forum. That really is the best place not only to see our tool, but all the other tools that are out there uh, in this particular domain. And we all are trying to work together, so please ask your questions. Don't suffer in silence. If you have a problem, please ask on the forum. Uh, thank you for your time. I encourage you to watch the other videos in the series, including the one on Sort Profiler, but also the basics uh, that cover the fundamentals of image analysis in the other parts of the series. Thank you.